Good afternoon, dear friends. We are beginning this Mass of Thursday in the 12th week of ordinary time. In today's Mass, we will pray for all of you and pray for those who have asked our special prayers. Today, I pray for Mary Limon Jelly and Donna Negron who celebrate their birthday and for all of us who have their birthdays today. We pray for all of you. I also want to pray for Father O'Grady, who injured his shoulder and is healing. Pray for John Lynch and for Anita. We pray and ask that God may help them find healing in their various conditions. I also pray for Jerry Schoenfeld, who passed away, and all those who have passed away in our families or people that we know, that God may grant them rest and peace. And finally, we pray that God may help us recapture our faith again and recapture the motivation that once led our faith. I invite you to bring your own intentions and let us continue to pray together and for each other. Our opening hymn today is Table of Plenty. We are invited to this table of plenty where God gives us everything that we need. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here on the table of plenty. Who oh, come and sit at my table? Where saints and sinners are friends, I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty, God will provide for all that we need. Here at this table of plenty. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, I bring your intentions from this Mass to God, and I ask that God may hear you, and that God may bless your aspirations, your dreams, and your vision. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and be deeply sorry for them. In this Mass, I also would like to pray for all missing persons. Pray especially for one of our soldiers that is missing. Pray and ask that God may help, may help you know, those who are seeking for her to find her and bring her home to her parents and back to her unit. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us say, Lord Jesus Christ, you always show us mercy, especially when we fail you. Never leave us to our resources. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you always come to our help to provide guidance and lead. Never leave us to our blindness. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you always come to soften our hearts in our arrogance. Never leave us to our sense of confidence, self-confidence in your mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to God that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundations of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the second book of Kings. Jehoachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's, his mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of 
Ernatan of Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his forebears had done. At that time, the officials of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, attacked Jerusalem, and the city came under siege. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon himself, arrived at the city while his servants were besieging it. Jen Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, together with his mother, his ministers, officers, and functionaries surrendered to the king of Babylon, who in the eighth year of his reign took him captive. And he carried off all the treasures of the temple of the Lord and those of the palace and broke up all the gold utensils that Solomon, king of Israel, had provided in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord himself had foretold. He deported all Jerusalem, all the officers and men of the army, 10,000 in number, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None were left among the people of the land except the poor. He deported Joachim to Babylon, and also led captive from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother and wives, his functionaries, and the chief men of the land. The king of Babylon also led captive to Babylon all 7,000 men of the army and a thousand craftsmen and smiths, all of them trained soldiers. In place of Jehoachim, the king of Babylon appointed his uncle, Metaniah, as king and changed his name to Zedekiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the corpses of your servants as food to the birds of heaven, the flesh of your faithful ones, to the beast of the earth. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. They have poured out their blood like water round about Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury them. We have become the reproach of our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us, O Lord. How long will you be angry forever? Will your jealous your jealousy burn like fire? For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my commandments, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then he will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them, will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew, and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew, and buffeted the house, and it collapsed, 
and what and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, uh, good afternoon. And I, I want to wish you a very excellent day today. And I hope that today is a better day for you. Not because everything is okay, but because as believers and as God's children, we constantly live in hope that tomorrow, tomorrow will bring us something more, something better. Tomorrow will take us one step further, one step closer to God's purpose for our lives. That's our hope in Christ Jesus. And so it is with that hope that in spite of how everything looks like and feels like, we still keep marching on and pressing forward fearlessly, not because we have all of it figured out, but because we believe we are children of one who has it all figured out. We are God's children. Today, I would like to reflect with you on two little points. The first is from the first reading and the second from the gospel reading. From the first reading, I want you to remember today, if you're listening to me or you get a chance to hear this message at any time, I want you to listen to me. Whether you are a growing child, whether you are a student, teacher, nurse, priest, police, army, anything that you are, parent, grandparent, I want to take this to heart. That your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews are learning from you. You don't have to sit them down and give them lessons and teach them. Those don't work as much as what they see you do. What they hear you say. How they see you act. Your children and your grandchildren pay attention when you least expect that they are listening to you. Believe it or not, they will replicate the things they saw you do, not the things you told them. They will replicate the things they heard you say, not the things you said to them. That's very important. That's why I believe that when God created me, and created you and created every one of us, your children, every one of us, we came into this world with a pure soul, unaffected by sin, unaffected by bigotry, unaffected by selfishness, unaffected by greed, unaffected by everything evil. Whatever I am today, good or bad or ugly, I learned from the things I saw in the lives of every other person. First, my family. Who I am today. About 60% of who I am today, I got from my family. The other 40% is what I learned and reflected upon as I grew older. So, your children will replicate the things they hear you and see you say and do. That's how what you do today would live down the line. Sometimes when we hear that God is going to, we hear generational causes. Generational causes are not God causes that God places on your children down the line. They are causes we pass on to our children down the line. And so what you do today is that important. You are planting something in the soul of your son or your daughter or your, or your grandchild or your great-grandchild or your niece or your nephew who is looking up to you. I hope that when the next time, beginning today, that you would reflect and reflect again before you say and do anything, even if innocently, and be self-aware that what you do would have consequences for all of those 
who are listening to you and who are hearing you. See what is happening here in the first reading. The Bible tells us Jehoachin was 18 years old, so he was just barely an adult, 18 years old when he became king. And he reigned for three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehusha, daughter of El Elnatan of Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his forebears had done. That means he just didn't grow as an 18 year old to learn how to, 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 he wasn't born evil. He learned to do evil, just as his forebears had done. That means just as his mom, his dad, his grandpa, his great grandma, he learned all of that. He wasn't born evil. He learned to do evil. He said he did evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his forebears had done. So our children are learning. And realize the punishment that happened, everything that happened, the consequences of what happened to him. Not only did he, did he lose the kingdom, he lost the kingdom and lost everything else. Even his mother and his entire family were taken into captivity in Babylon. So there, there are consequences, dear friends, for how we raise our children and the kind of things we teach them. See, no person, no adult father grows up and tells his son, I want you to be a racist. I want you to be a bigot. I don't know if any parent does that. But we teach our children bigotry and racism silently and quietly, sometimes unintentionally, inadvertently. We teach them to be racist. We teach them to be bigots. For, for instance, when you say something as innocent as, see those white those, uh, black people or see those white people? They are terrible. I don't know why they do the things they do. Or something even as innocent as black people, you know, I, I don't know why. They're just so noisy or so loud or so. Sometimes you say those little things, all right? What you're saying by interpretation is that there's something wrong with those people. That's what you're saying. And so what your child in quotes or decodes is that those people are different from us. There's something wrong with them as, as different from us who have almost everything right about us. Because unless it's right about me, I cannot complain about someone else. So that's how we raise our children, inadvertently, without intending. And yet we raise them to be the worst of everything. So that's the first thing I want you to understand today. And I hope that you can begin today to mother for your children. Sometimes we worry we, we, and we don't know why our children are no longer following the faith. They no longer believe. They no longer go to church. Yes, they don't go to church because we have all we have done as parents is we have confused them. They see us go to church, kneel down. We do everything. We, we are so sacred and so religious in church. And then they come back and see how we treat people. They cannot reconcile that. This person who is so religious, they pray every day. They, they force us to go to mass. They do all... And then we turn back and see how they live and behave. So we confuse them. And in that confusion, they just choose not to follow because we don't model what we try to profess. We don't model for them. And I think more than anything else, we, we, we blame this on, on how the, the, the world has become um, anti-religious and everything. No, no, no. We, have be, we are the ones who have become anti-religious because we are not modeling for our children how to be religious, truly religious, because we profess what we don't live out. We profess what we don't believe. And, and so, unless, look, we can save our church, we can save Christianity only when we begin to live it. But if we only profess it as we do, we will not be able to save not, not if, not, we may not be able to preserve it and keep it there for our children and for our children's children because all they see is that we're living a lie alright the see this person, goes to communion does everything and then they look and hear how the person talks about others they just can't reconcile that is it surprising that you watch and see that almost all the young children, white, black, Latinos who are protesting out they are saying we don't want to accept the world as it is. That's how I hear them. Because they don't believe. 
that we have lived out and have taught them the right values. So we can save our church. That's what I know. We can save our church today. Whether we are priests, parents, grandparents, whatever we are, if we only begin to live our faith. And that leads me to the second, spot, the second point. The Lord said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But unless only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So that's a question. What does it mean to do the will? Because for most of us, all right, we are just, uh, we take pleasure. Our goal is for others to see that we are believers, that we are Christians. So membership is far more important to us than really doing the difficult deed. So if you come to our houses, you see um, the images of faith everywhere. Our cars are littered with, with uh, stickers. You come to our offices, it's everywhere. But yet, our spirit, we do all of that to hide what is fundamentally wrong about us, in most cases. The Lord doesn't care that your car is all patched up with images of the Sacred Heart, you know, the Divine Mercy, our Blessed Mother, St. Nicholas, St. Christopher. Now, those things are okay. But they would only make sense if you live trying to follow all of those people that you've posted on your car, on your office, and everywhere. That's when it makes sense. Otherwise, if we do that, just to get the attention of people and to have people imagine and support, suppose that we are faithful, we are believers, we are Christ-like, or we are Christians, then what the Lord is saying here today applies to you too. Applies to me if that's who I am. It says he will tell us to depart from him. He does not know us. It says on that day we will say, did we not do this in your name? Did we not do that in your name? Did I not have all of these posters in my name? Did I not attend 1,000 masses every day in your name? Did I not receive communion every day in your name? Did I not... And he says, no, I don't recognize you. I do not know you. So there's a possibility that we're doing a lot. It's just we're not doing it for the Lord. So you may want to think about who it is you are doing it for. Otherwise, we might end up having done everything, everything, just end up not having our names in the register. That would be a great tragedy. Real great tragedy. So we pray, dear friends, we can we can redeem and we can redeem and salvage our church today. We can start now. So so think about it. When you were baptized, when you got confirmed, when you got wedded, when you did your first communion, when you got ordained, think about the kind of life you wanted to live. Whatever happened to that life? Whatever happened to that you, think about it. And think about how you might strive to capture or to recapture that vision that you had when you first got baptized or first did your first communion or first confirmed all that you thought you would do for Christ. Whatever happened to that you, go find out. Maybe ask God to help you recapture that fire again. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Christ is a supreme high priest interceding for us. He understands our weaknesses for he is also the suffering servant taking our faults on himself. His work and example inspire us to pray with humble devotion for our Holy Father Pope Francis for our Archbishop Timothy Broglio for bishops of God's church around the world for priests, for deacons and for all those who teach this faith that we may recognize the responsibility we carry and disseminate not just by words but also by actions the kindness, the mercy, the compassion and the healing graces of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a recovery of values, of duty, integrity, service, 
among government workers that God may touch our leaders beginning from the president the senators the members of the house governors mayors local council leaders and all people in public office to recognize that their duty is called call for and needed in building and fostering reconciliation among communities and helping to build a safe world for everyone we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for men and women who work in restaurants hotels and the entertainment industry that they may recognize the power of art hospitality and service and so put themselves in the service of christ for the good of society we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for gratitude to our eucharistic lord who gives his life for us as a ransom for many that like him we may lay our lives in the service of others and so help to heal the world in its pain hurt and brokenness we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for Mary Limon Jerry, for Donna Negron, and for all those who celebrate their birthdays or wedding anniversaries today. For Father O'Grady, for Anita, and for John Lynch, who are sick and recovering, that God may help them be restored fully. And for Jerry Schoenfeld and all those who have died, especially people that we know, that God may grant them rest and peace. For missing people, especially for Vanessa Julian who is missing today that God may help them find her and restore her to her family we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus holy Mary mother of God Pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. We bring our hopes and desires before you in union with the atoning work of your Son, the eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by his actions, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always stands everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and the saints, we declare our glory as with one voice, we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Jerry Schoenfeld, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant to Lord that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord left us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to you and all your families, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting.
for all those who are unable to participate in the body and blood of Christ at this time. Let us pray. Almighty God, in this moment of grace where you give us yourself in your sacrament, there are some of your children out there today who are still unable to participate. They desire you. They're asking for you. They need you. We beg Almighty God that your Holy Spirit, your angels, may bring this nourishment and this blessing to them too. That they may receive the full effects of their expectations and desires. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that we, that what we celebrate with constant devotion, may be a sure pledge of eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the reins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you who were able to join us at this Mass. And I pray that God may hear you, that God may answer you, and that God may reveal himself strongly and powerfully in your life. So always, if you forget everything I said today, keep this in your mind, that you are still the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the summons for our closing hymn. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know I never be the same. Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I had called your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you reach the hostile stare? Will your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayers in you and you in me?